So in this video, I want to give you some more context and background information with regard to the two demos that I brought with me during the first pizza meeting in February 2024. So for some context, how do the demos relate to what we did the rest of the evening? So most of the evening, Ramon uh, guided us through the web interface and the app of ChatGPT and Copilot, which is the way most people use ChatGPT. So they just go to chat at openai.com, ask a question, add in a prompt, maybe upload load images and then get a response back from uh, the chatbot, which is great. But there are other ways. And one of those ways is using an application programming interface or an API. So what does it mean? Well, this is sort of like what we did last night with the user, the web interface, and you talk directly to the large language model. With an API, you can write an application and that application then talks to the large language model and talks to the web interface. So you can do all uh, kinds of cool stuff in between. So that's what I did in the, in the demos that I showed last night. And some more context. Even way before there was ChatGPT, we sort of like wanted to show teachers what AI in education could do. And back then, say 2020 and 2021, um, that was really difficult because there were no such nice applications or web interfaces as ChatGPT. What we did back then was we built an experiment chatbot, uh, which was a bot that the students, the teachers could talk to via uh, Google Home Mini or using their own phone or a web interface or even Discord. And those students were uh, uh, students that wanted to become master students for the master design in contemporary learning or in Dutch master on the van eigen And of course, the idea wasn't that they learned how to build a chatbot like that. They had to sort of like think about the final step what were the questions that they wanted their students to be able to ask the chatbot and what kind of answers would they want the chatbot to reply them with and the nice thing even without ChatGPT, uh, dialogue flow by google um, was also a system where you would train it with sort of like examples of questions and then you would provide it with answers for those uh, questions and even if the student wouldn't use the exact phrasing that you would have in the google sheet the chatbot would still be able to respond to that. So that's sort of like where I come from as an example of um, getting teachers to think about what do you expect from the AI. Okay, one of the things I showed last night was Olama. So where with ChatGPT, OpenAI uh, uh, owns, controls, uh, de develops, trains the large language model. They host it on their systems. They provide you with a web interface. There are a lot of other open source uh, large language models and to be able to use them you can sort of like run them on your own computer and maybe not on a laptop although Olama will work on any laptop it will work on the CPU but it's better if you sort of like have a big ass desktop with uh, a good graphics card in it so you install uh, Olama and then you go for, to for instance Hugging Face that's a, it's a big open source uh, language model uh, website they got more than 500,000 different open source models and you can download any of the models there, use them in Olama and you don't have to pay any fees to use the API and you can use the large language model with your own data or with your own chat questions and no data leaves your system. And there are even people that build nice web interfaces uh, for Olama. So you can use it in your browser just like ChatGPT. You can upload images. Um, but the biggest difference there is that you can just choose any of the open source models available. Okay. So what are things you can build? Well, we started with a chatbot. Why not build a chatbot using Olama? And what about the chatbot with really specific knowledge? Like um, we did with the teachers where they would think of, okay, what are the questions uh, you want students to be able uh, to ask the chatbot? But okay, let's do something easy like a chatbot that knows everything there is to know about harry potter and who even acts like if you're talking to harry potter or maybe an ingerbot trained on all the articles by inger molnar and no talks and interviews and who acts and responds as if you're talking to uh, inger sure but 
coding something like that is really difficult, right? Well, luckily, um, there are really smart people that build stuff like Flowwise AI, and there are different alternatives, but Flowwise AI is the one I used for the, the demos that I showed, and it's what's called an open source local code environment. So here again, you can use it uh, online in a hosted environment, but in this case, I just downloaded the source code and I ran it on that same big desktop that I had on my desk. Um, and then you get an environment and you can see it down here where you just drag and drop in nodes and connect them uh, and to build up sort of like all the different steps that you need for, for a chatbot. And you can use Flowwise AI uh, in combination with uh, a commercial LLM like ChatGPT or with open source self-hosted LLM. So in this case, I use the OpenAI API to talk to the, uh, the large language model by uh, OpenAI. But for instance, the data is stored locally and it's kept in an in-memory vector store so it doesn't go to OpenAI. And you can make your own choices with regard to that. So, and by just dragging and dropping all that information, you can build your chatbot. So that's step one. The second step is that we want to train the chatbot and have it know everything about Harry Potter. And for that we use Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. So we had this situation, me or you, the web interface, the API and the application. So with this you could sort of like tell ChatGPT behave like Harry Potter and answer like Harry Potter. But we're not sure that uh, ChatGPT 3.5 or maybe 4 knows everything there is to know about Harry Potter. So we still have to risk that it starts to hallucinate and starts to come up with uh, answers that are not really true or maybe because it, it indexed information from websites that didn't have all the correct information with regards to that topic. So with RAG we can sort of like uh, circumvent that. So in this case you would just take the seven PDFs uh, the, the Harry Potter books, and then feed that to uh, a large language model that creates embeddings, and that sort of like cuts up the, the well, we cut up the books and we store them like like vectors in a vector database. So so you wouldn't recognize it as as PDFs anymore, but it would be something that we can tell the LLM to use to answer our questions. So if we then write a really strict prompt for that LLM, telling okay, you're Harry Potter. Uh, you answer the questions as if you are Harry Potter, uh, you don't uh, break characters, so you're not going to say, oh, I'm a large language model, I don't know that. If I ask a question, look it up in the vector database. If, based on the information in the vector database, you can answer that question, then you answer the question. If you, you don't find that information in uh, the database, then you just say, okay, I don't know. So if you would ask the Harry Potter bot, what is one plus one, or what is the weather gonna be, or something like that, it will just answer, I don't know, because it will just use the information in the, in the vector database. There are, of course, options where you say, okay, look it up in the vector database, and if it's not there, then maybe do a search query, but in this case, it will just use the vector database, which has its limitations. It is only restricted to answering uh, questions that can be answered with that information there, but it also means it won't hallucinate and it will only give uh, the information that you wanted to give. And with that, you can build uh, a chatbot. You'll have to provide it with an, an image of Harry Potter and it will just answer all those questions in the books. And apparently um, the name of the Wizard High Court of Law, it couldn't find in the books, although it should be there, but it won't come up with just any answer for that. So similarly with uh, Ingebot, and here you see an example of a conversation with the Ingebot. And you see it's not perfect. Um, it, it, again, it's like the garbage in, garbage out. I don't mean that the transcripts are garbage, but it's more like if the transcripts uh, or the interviews talk about Inge in the third person, like Molina expects that, then the Ingebot will use those kind of structures uh, to answer questions as well. So you'll have to sort of curate the information that you put in really well to make this uh, a really uh, believable version of, uh, of Inge. So who, who knows, maybe we'll come up with a, with a data set that will answer a lot of those questions and make life for Inge a lot easier so she, she doesn't have to answer all those questions by people anymore. Okay, another example I showed was Jupyter Notebooks, it's sort of like uh, more playing with the API. This is really 
uh, the, the nerdy stuff. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks are sort of like an interactive Python notebook in your browser. So this is really like uh, installing Python libraries. And this is really the code that would, would go in an actual application. Uh, the nice thing is that you can sort of like run, run it on a cell by cell basis. And this was something where I played with using different uh, large language models in Olama. So I had one uh, language model, one model that, that sort of like was good in describing the image, so the Mona Lisa. Then another one was better at coming up with poems. And then I used the open AI API to sort of like uh, convert that poem into an MP3. So probably something that I should be able to do in Flowwise uh, as well. Uh, and, and just make it in, uh, into drag and drop uh, nodes. But this was something I played with in, in, before I started working with, with Flowwise. So I'm gonna wrap up with some YouTube channels that you can follow if you wanna learn more about this. There are way more than, than this, and, and there are a lot of people that spend way more time than you or I will be able to spend on keeping up with everything that is happening in this, this area. And that's that's a, another part of uh, what I think is really important to understand that there is way much more than ChatGPT. I mean, if you hadn't played with anything yet, it's really good that you start playing with ChatGPT. Um, but the, the, the area of uh, large language models, generative AI is, 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 is broadening really uh, fast and still is broadening since that first uh, release of uh, ChatGPT. And there are a lot of people that uh, will provide you with information um, about what works, what doesn't work, and what are recent developments. Okay, so it leaves me with just one question. What are you gonna try next and what are you gonna demonstrate during the next pizza meeting? Thank you for watching, bye-bye.